Vivian, will you give me a break? You've been standing in front of the mirror for three hours. But do I really look good? You look marvelous. Very glamorous. Sexy. I mean, do you think Arthur will go absolutely berserk when he sees me again? <laughs> Maybe you'd better use the mirror. Well, I mean, I hope Arthur's at least a little hungry for me. Hungry? Well, I don't know about Arthur's appetites. But when Walter comes home from these fishing trips, he charges in like he's Yule Gibbons and I'm a bowl of grape nuts. <laughs> well, I mean, I just hope Arthur's at least a little pent up. Vivian, after 14 days in the Canadian wilderness, Arthur will be ready for anything without antlers. <laughs> Mark, why is it that men like to go off together so much? I don't want to know. <laughs> Maud, I don't want to sound indelicate, but do you think, do you think I look bosomy? <laughs> Vivian, you've been an adult woman for quite a few years now. Haven't you ever looked down, even accidentally? <laughs> but I put a little makeup in my cleavage. Vivian, a good snowfall helps, but it doesn't make Switzerland look any bigger. <laughs> That's them! They're back! That's them! They're back! Oh, sweetheart! Oh, simple card on Valentine's Day will do. We thought you were our husbands. Oh, Mrs. Naugatuck, we haven't been with them for two weeks. Tell us honestly, how do we look? Like a pair of barracuda waiting for a stray cow to cross the river. <laughs> oh, that has to be them! Oh, oh. That has to be... Wait, oh, wait, 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 Vivian, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Vivian, 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 listen. The way to play it is cool, blasé, and a little distant. Now get out of my way. I want Walter to see me as soon as he walks in. <laughs> Maud, Maud, do I look sexy? Wet your lips. <laughs> oh, Walter! Walter! Well, girls, here we are! <laughs> Sweetheart! Wait! Walter, you look like the Japanese soldier who just found out the war is over. Arthur! Arthur! Do you have any idea how much we spent on gasoline in Canada? It's <laughs> graceful. I'll figure it out for you and I'll have it for you. Uh... Look, Walter, why don't you and Arthur go out and run through the sprinklers? I am a man, Maud, a man with mud on him. Canadian mud. Pure, natural, organic soil from Canada. It's dirt, Walter. <laughs> Imported, but still dirt. And if at all, look at that arm. That's been smoked of a pine. A Canadian pine-smoked arm. Ripped by a branch of a big birch near Brush Creek. Blob of rosin from a sweet gum tree. A calling card dropped by a wild speckled goose. <laughs> Maud, I know I'm raunchy, but I can see how thrilled you are to have me home. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I'm... I'm... Oh, overwhelmed. <laughs> so after you scrape off the top layers of mud and guano, we'll celebrate. <laughs> and we'll break open a bottle of Airwick. <laughs> You're right, Maud. Come on, Arthur, let's go and wash up. I got it. $98.42 just for gasoline. And they say doctors are robbers. And that's not even counting the oil. Vivian. Vivian, I think you're going into shock. Vivian, can you hear me? It's, it's just that my expectations were so high, and then when Arthur hardly even glanced at me... <laughs> Come on, now Arthur is like cheap French wine. He doesn't travel well. <laughs> this will pass, and all we can do is just be sweet and patient while they work through their pattern. What pattern? What's going to happen? Well, let's see. For example, Walter will start by enumerating the things that he did. You know, wonderfully exciting, fascinating things like um, he picked up a rock. <laughs> And uh, then he'll catch a fish. Oh, God, please don't let him tell about catching that fish. <laughs> he'll say, 
We gotta move up there, Maud. We gotta. He'll say this every day for a week while I smile. That's our role when they come back from these fishing trips. Moronic Madonnas. <laughs> Maud! Maud, guess what? Maud, guess what? I ate peas with a knife. <laughs> Twelve peas, Maud, all on one knife. Oh. <laughs> An even dozen. I am so proud of you, Walt. And then you know what? I took that knife and stuck it right into the table. Whack! And it went wang, 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 wang. Oh, that's beautiful, Walter. So outdoorsy. Maud. Popeye Kling. He owns the Moose Tooth Lodge. Well, he wants to expand, and he's willing to take me as a partner. Hey, Walter, did you tell him about the poem I wrote up there? Oh, Arthur, you wrote a poem. Oh, not just a poem. A classic. An American outdoor classic. I'm going to go down with Kipling. Holy mackerel, the fish. Come on, Walter. We've got to take the heads off the lamb and get them in the freezer. The fish, Maud, the fish. Twelve months a year eating fresh fish. I'll catch them and you got them. Think about that. <laughs> Why doesn't he say hello? <laughs> you know New Yorkers never say hello. <laughs> Maud, do you think you'll really go down with Kipling? I hope so, Vivian. <laughs> and soon, for your sake. Arthur? Arthur, would you please do me a favor and go out and say something to Vivian, please? Vivian? Oh, oh, yeah. Vivian. <coughs> yeah. Oh, Vivian. How about this of me? You wanted to hear my poem. <clears throat> I saw a cloud up in the sky. I wondered why. I wondered why. But it began to rain. And with each drip, my soul was swabbed by heaven's Q-tip. <laughs> Arthur, that's beautiful. I know. <laughs> I wrote that poem with a piece of birch bark and a stick of charcoal and a flickering candlelight. And I love the makeup in your cleavage. <laughs> it's Pawnee blush on <laughs> Helena Rubenstein. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I love these suburban orgies. <laughs> I can hardly wait for my day off. <laughs> and, and it is this little shallow pool, and everybody says, oh, don't go over there. You'll never catch fish over there. One morning, I just moseyed over. You know me. <laughs> I didn't even have a pole. I had a string and a hook and a couple of worms in my pocket. I dropped the string into this little shallow pool and bingo! I caught the biggest fish you ever saw. Maud, the folks around the lake, they couldn't believe it. Hank and Stony and Slim and Doc and Perky and... Spud. Spud! <laughs> they threw us a big party in their cabin that night. The folks around the lake sound right friendly. <laughs> serious this time, Maud. I rapped with God up there. And then this miracle happened. This deal with Papa Kling opened up. I can sell my business and invest in that lodge. We gotta move up there, Maud. We gotta. <laughs> Walter, please, not again. There you go. Doing it to me again. You've known for years that I've had this need to get out of this concrete jungle. This stifling existence, keeping up with the Joneses. But you don't care. You're killing me, Maud. You're killing me. <laughs> well? Walter, I have two words for you. Flock! Wang, 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 wang. <laughs> Arthur, Walter would like to see you in the kitchen. Oh, and Arthur, I love the Helena Rubenstein on your cheek. <laughs> Vivian, this is the worst. This is the worst. I mean, it is bad enough that I have to put up with his little games year after year after year, but this time, going into partnership with Mr. Bigfoot at Lake Titty Caca. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I ought to this time? Do you know what I ought to? I ought to teach him a lesson and call his bluff. This time I should tell him, yes, we'll sell the business. Why don't you? You are right, Vivian. You are right. I am going to tell him that we are moving up to the wilderness where our nearest neighbors have four paws and bury their nuts in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
There's something else I want oh, to tell Walter. you, Joe. Wait, wait. I have something to say to you. Walter, forgive me. I didn't mean to step on your dream. Oh, Walter, how could I have been so thoughtless, so selfish to impose all this comfort on you? <laughs> I am going with you to Loose Tooth Lodge. <laughs> Loose Tooth Lodge, stop humoring me, Maud. I'm not, darling, honestly. But I'll tell you, we cannot procrastinate, Walter. We must strike while the iron is hot. Now, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I am going to put the house up for sale. You call Henry Jenkins. You know, he's been trying to buy Findlay's appliances for years. Let's call Mr. Jenkins right now and tell him you're selling the store. Uh, yeah, information, Rigo Park. Yes. Jenkins, Henry. No, I'm sorry, I cannot look through the directory. I'm at an orgy and some clown is fogging up my contact lenses. <laughs> yes, I'll hold on. No, more. no. No, Walter? Vivian, this might be of interest to you. It seems that Walter is changing his mind again. Walter, why won't you let me call Mr. Jenkins about the store? Because I already did, and he jumped at the chance. Maud, we're going to live in the Canadian wilderness. Walter. <laughs> you did it, Maud. You did it. I told him it was a deal if I could talk you into it. But I didn't have to. Mm. Arthur, why are you here? <laughs> Swapped by my own wang 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 Oh, it's just lovely. And I'm crazy about that kitchen. Oh, Tom, let's buy this place. Yeah, yeah. I'm really getting good vibes about this house. I've always wanted a workbench like you've got in the basement. Oh, the workbench doesn't go with the house. Oh. Well, what the heck? What the heck? I love the bar. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. The bar doesn't go with the house. We'll take the house. You'll take the house? Well, <laughs> sure. It's a godsend to us. After living in an apartment, we've always wanted a place with three bathrooms. Oh, the bathrooms don't go with it. <laughs> All right, I'll throw them in. Are you sure you want to sell this house? No. I mean, yes. Oh, I... I mean... Uh... Oh, now look, look. We love this house. I'll pay you any reasonable amount. Why don't you just call us when you're ready? All right. I, I'm terribly sorry if I, if I seem upset. It's just that my husband and I are so eager to get out of here. Here, I'll, I'll call you first thing in the morning. Oh, Ma... Ma, you're not really gonna go through with this, are you? Ma, all your roots are here. Ma, you'll be throwing away your entire life. Look, Vivian, uh, Margaret Mead, one of the world's greatest anthropologists, said that we American wives outlive our husbands because we're so materialistic that we kill them off early. <laughs> I figure this move to Canada will add five years to Walter's life, take ten off mine, average us out, and we'll die together. <laughs> I think that's what Margaret Mead meant. Now what the hell does she know? <laughs> uh, Henry Jenkins, the new owner, janitor, and head gopher of Finley Appliances. Terrific. To Walter Finley, the only guy I've ever known that had the guts to grab the impossible dream. Come on, Arthur. No, 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 I mean it, Walter. You'll be driving a pickup truck, wearing thermal underwear, <laughs> feeding polar bears, taller than mud. If you're careful. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Arthur. Oh, it's going to be funny having a friendly Finley's without a Finley, eh, Henry? I'm not going to have that problem, Walter. The first thing I'm going to do is change the name of the store. What? Henry, you'll be throwing away 25 years of goodwill. Henry, that store is known all over the neighborhood as Friendly Finley's. I always thought Friendly Finley's was hokey. Yeah? What are you going to call it? Jolly Jenkins. <laughs> what a nice thing of that. Well, <clears throat> I'll see you, uh, I'll see you at the lawyer's Thursday. Oh, don't forget the going away party at Walner's tomorrow. Right, I'll see you then. See you Jolly Jenkins, jolly jerk. <laughs> Imagine changing the name of Friendly Findlay's. That man's throwing away my immortality. 
Walter, the Finley name may not be up in lights, but it will always blink in the hearts of those of us you left behind. You're right, Arthur. Look at the hardware store in the corner that was sold. The guy put in 30 years building that business and nobody ever forgot his name. Whose name? What's his name? <laughs> oh, Josephson or, 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 or Jameson, something like that. Right. <laughs> he spent all those years and then he quit, yeah. moved to the Midwest and he's yeah. to run a chicken farm. Gee, I wonder how he's doing. Shot himself two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly Findlays. That's not hokey. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Charlie. Good night, Marion. Thanks for coming by. Uh, don't worry, Walter. I'll keep the old store jumping. Who cares? <laughs> Isn't Walter adorable with that moose call? He doesn't really hunt moose, though. He just wants to move up there and be accepted by them. <laughs> Come on. Right, right. Hey, Arthur! <laughs> Arthur makes his moose call using only his hands. <laughs> if you could give milk, Arthur, we'd take you along. <laughs> All right, while you two are mating, I'll get the coffee. <laughs> We're really gonna miss you, old buddy. Just think, this time Friday, you and Marty will be up there in the wilds of Canada, living it up. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow you're going to sign the papers and it's goodbye store. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Your last hurrah for this way of life. You better! <laughs> <laughs> I want that. I love you and Vivian. <laughs> I love my store. Damn it. I adore smog. <laughs> well, you're going to Canada to be a man. Men don't cry. You're right, Arthur. That wasn't the new me crying, that was the old me. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't really mean it. Selling the business, selling the house, doing what I'm doing to Maud. I'm gonna love it up there in that godforsaken country. <laughs> oh, baby. I'm gonna miss my kitchen so. <laughs> Goodbye, stove. <laughs> Goodbye, sink. <laughs> Goodbye, refrigerator. I'll defrost you after everyone's gone to bed and we can cry together. <laughs> oh, oh, Maud, Maud. Oh, Maud, Maud. Oh. Male ego. Thank God I'm wise enough not to have any. <laughs> Poor water. Arthur, what the hell are you talking about? Walter's scared. Scared? Arthur, do you mean that after all he put me through, Walter is having second thoughts at the last minute and won't tell me? Male pride and dignity. The man's gone too far. How could Tarzan tell Jane that he fell out of the treehouse? <laughs> Arthur, did he go home? You don't want to be here to witness the carnage. What? Tarzan did not fall out of that treehouse. Jane pushed him. <laughs> Snow is snowing, and I'm not going, and he can marry a moose. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, Walter, honey, I'm really looking forward to going, aren't you? Me? Are you kidding? I'm dying to go. Perhaps. <laughs> of course, we will miss Arthur and Viv and Carol and little Philip, but... But, you know, the wonderful thing is I really can't think of one good reason for not going. Can you? Not one. Not one. Ooh. You burned yourself. Mm. Lord, you burned your Oh, pinky. honey, it'll be all right. Look, I just happened to think, if that happened up there in the wilderness, where would we get a Band-Aid? I'd run down to the corner drugstore. Maud, the nearest corner is 47 miles away. That's all right. I love a good jog in the morning. <laughs> jog? Maud, it's cold and windy up there. 
the north wind. Your hair will look a mess. Where would we find a hairdresser? There's no Mr. Billy. <laughs> Mr. Billy will fly up. Mr. Billy always flies. <laughs> Worst comes to worst, I'll wash my own hair, you know, through a hole in the ice. <laughs> but Maud! Oh, besides Walter, I'll have my big, strong, handsome Northwoods He-Man to take care of me. That reminds me, you're a gynecologist. <laughs> Where would we find one? Not in the yellow pages. The yellow pages are only one page thick. <laughs> The Mounties will find us one. The Mounties always get their gynecologists. I can't let you do this. I'm just a selfish beast, indulging myself for my own pleasure while forcing you to leave behind the things you hold most dear. Your druggist, Mr. Billy, your gynecologist. <laughs> Taking you away from the things you love the most. Findley's friendly appliances. <laughs> Maud, we're not going. Oh, come on. Now, Walter, I will not let you throw away your lifelong dream just because I happen to be crazy about that store. No, Maud, I've made up my mind. I love you more than my silly old dream. We're not going, and that's that. Oh, Walter. Walter, you're the most unselfish man who ever lived. <laughs> it's my nature. <laughs> that is Arthur with that ridiculous moose call. Hey, Marty. <laughs> Only the head, Arthur. The other end is still a horse. Goodbye, stove. <laughs> Goodbye, sink. <laughs> Goodbye, refrigerator. I'll defrost you after everyone's gone to bed and we can cry together. <laughs> oh, oh, Maud, Maud. Oh, Maud, Maud. Oh. Male ego. Thank God I'm wise enough not to have any. <laughs> Poor Walter. Arthur, what the hell are you talking about? Walter's scared. Scared? Arthur, do you mean that after all he put me through, Walter is having second thoughts at the last minute and won't tell me? Male pride and dignity. The man's gone too far. Hop for tires and tell Jane that he fell out of the treehouse. <laughs> Arthur, that he didn't go home. You don't want to be here to witness the carnage. What? Tarzan did not fall out of that treehouse. Jane pushed him. <laughs> the snow is snowing, and I'm not going, and he can marry a moose. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, Walter, honey, I'm really looking forward to going, aren't you? Me? Are you kidding? I'm dying to go. Perhaps. <laughs> of course. We will miss Arthur and Viv and Carol and little Philip, but... But, you know, the wonderful thing is I really can't think of one good reason for not going. Can you? Not one. Not one. Ooh. You burned yourself. Mm. Lord, you burned your Oh, pinky. honey, it'll be all right. Look, I just happened to think, if that happened up there in the wilderness, where would we get a Band-Aid? I'd run down to the corner drugstore. Maud, the nearest corner is 47 miles away. 
That's all right. I love a good jog in the morning. <laughs> jog? Mort, it's cold and windy up there. The north wind. Your hair will look a mess. Where would we find a hairdresser? There's no Mr. Billy. <laughs> Mr. Billy will fly up. Mr. Billy always flies. <laughs> and if worse comes to worse, I'll wash my own hair, you know, through a hole in the ice. <laughs> but Maud! Oh, besides Walter, I'll have my big, strong, handsome Northwoods He-Man to take care of me. That reminds me, you're a gynecologist. <laughs> Where would we find one? Not in the yellow pages. The yellow pages are only one page thick. <laughs> this will pass, and all we can do is just be sweet and patient while they work through their pattern. What pattern? What's going to happen? Well, let's see. For example, Walter will start by enumerating the things that he did. You know, wonderfully exciting, fascinating things like, um, he picked up a rock. <laughs> And uh, then he'll catch a fish. Oh, God, please don't let him tell about catching that fish. He'll say, we gotta move up there, Maud. We gotta. He'll say this every day for a week while I smile. That's our role when they come back from these fishing trips. Moronic Madonnas. <laughs> Maud, Maud, guess what? Maud, guess what? I ate peas with a knife. <laughs> Twelve peas, Maud, all on one knife. Okay. An even dozen. I am so proud of you, Walt. And then you know what? I took that knife and stuck it right into the table. Whack! And it went wang, 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 wang. Oh, that's beautiful, Walter. So outdoorsy. Maud. Popeye Kling. He owns the Moose Tooth Lodge. Well, he wants to expand, and he's willing to take me as a partner. Hey, Walter, did you tell him about the poem I wrote up there? Oh, Arthur, you wrote a poem. Oh, not just a poem. A classic. An American outdoor classic. I'm going to go down with Kipling. Holy mackerel, the fish. Come on, Walter. We've got to take the heads off the lamb and get them in the freezer. The fish, Maud, the fish. Twelve months a year eating fresh fish. I'll catch them, and you got them. Think about that. <laughs> Why doesn't he say hello? You know New Yorkers never say hello. Maud, do you think you'll really go down with Kipling? I hope so, Vivian. <laughs> and soon, for your sake. Arthur? Arthur, would you please do me a favor and go out and say something to Vivian, please? Vivian? Oh, oh, yeah, Vivian. <coughs> yeah. Oh, Vivian. How about this of me? You wanted to hear my poem. <clears throat> I saw a cloud up in the sky. I wondered why. I wondered why. But it began to rain. And with each drip, my soul was swabbed by heaven's Q-tip. <laughs> Arthur, that's beautiful. I know. <laughs> I wrote that poem with a piece of birch bark and a stick of charcoal and a flickering candlelight. And I love the makeup in your cleavage. <laughs> Pawnee blush on <laughs> Helena Rubenstein. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh! I love these suburban orgies. <laughs> I can hardly wait for my day off. Swabbed by heaven's Q tip. <laughs> I said that's beautiful. I know. <laughs> I wrote that poem with a piece of birch bark and a stick of charcoal and a flickering candlelight. And I love the makeup in your cleavage. It's Pawnee blush on <laughs> Helena Rubenstein. Oh. <laughs> oh! I love these suburban orgies. <laughs> I can hardly wait for my day off. <laughs> and, and it is this little shallow pool and everybody says, oh, don't go over there. You'll never catch fish over there. One morning, I just moseyed over. You know me. I didn't even have a pole. I had a string and a hook and a couple of worms in my pocket. I dropped the string into this little shallow pool and bingo, I caught the biggest fish you ever saw. Boy, the folks around the lake 
they couldn't believe it. Hank and Stoney and Slim and Doc and Perky and... Spud. Spud! <laughs> they threw us a big party in their cabin that night. The folks around the lake sound right friendly. <laughs> serious this time, Maud. I rapped with God up there. And then this miracle happened. This deal with Papa Kling opened up. I can sell my business and invest in that lodge. We gotta move up there, Maud. We gotta. <laughs> Walter, please, not again. There you go, doing it to me again. You've known for years that I've had this need to get out of this concrete jungle. This stifling existence, keeping up with the Joneses. But you don't care. You're killing me, Maud. You're killing me! <laughs> well? Walter, I have two words for you. Flock! Wang, 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 wang. <laughs> Arthur, Walter would like to see you in the kitchen. Oh, and Arthur, I love the Helena Rubinstein on your cheek. <laughs> Vivian, this is the worst. This is the worst. I mean, it is bad enough that I have to put up with his little games year after year after year, but this time, going into partnership with Mr. Bigfoot at Lake Titty Caca. <laughs> Time. Do you know what I ought to... I ought to teach him a lesson and call his bluff. This time I should tell him, yes, we'll sell the business. Why don't you? You are right, Vivian. You are right. I am going to tell him that we are moving up to the wilderness where our nearest neighbors have four paws and bury their nuts in the winter. <laughs> oh, oh, Maud, Maud. Oh, Maud, Maud. Oh. Male ego. Thank God I'm wise enough not to have any. <laughs> Poor Walter. Arthur, what the hell are you talking about? Walter's scared. Scared? Arthur, do you mean that after all he put me through, Walter is having second thoughts at the last minute and won't tell me? Male pride and dignity. The man's gone too far. How could Tarzan tell Jane that he fell out of the treehouse? <laughs> Arthur, did he go home? You don't want to be here to witness the carnage. What? Tarzan did not fall out of that treehouse. Jane pushed him. <laughs> the snow is snowing, and I'm not going, and he can marry a moose. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Oh, Walter, honey, I'm really looking forward to going, aren't you? Me? Are you kidding? I'm dying to go. Perhaps. <laughs> of course, we will miss Arthur and Viv and Carol and little Philip, but... But, you know, the wonderful thing is I really can't think of one good reason for not going. Can you? Not one. Not one. Ooh. You burned yourself. Mm. Lord, you burned your Oh, pinky. honey, it'll be all right. Look, I just happened to think. If that happened up there in the wilderness, where would we get a Band-Aid? I'd run down to the corner drugstore. More, the nearest corner is 47 miles away. That's all right. I love a good jog in the morning. <laughs> jog? More, it's cold and windy up there. The north wind! Your hair will look a mess. Where would we find a hairdresser? There's no Mr. Billy. <laughs> Mr. Billy will fly up. Mr. Billy always flies. <laughs> and if worse comes to worse, I'll wash my own hair, you know, through a hole in the ice. <laughs> but Maud! Oh, besides Walter, I'll have my big, strong, handsome Northwoods He-Man to take care of me. That reminds me, you're a gynecologist. <laughs> Where would we find one? Not in the yellow pages. The yellow pages are only one page thick. <laughs> the Mounties will find us one. The Mounties always get their gynecologists. <laughs> I can't let you do this. I'm just a selfish beast, indulging myself for my own pleasure while forcing you to leave behind the things you hold most dear. Your druggist, Mr. Billy, your gynecologist. <laughs> Taking you away from Mr. Carnage. What? 
Tarzan did not fall out of that treehouse. Jane pushed him. <laughs> Snow is snowing, and I'm not going, and he can marry a moose. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, Walter, honey, I'm really looking forward to going, aren't you? Me? Are you kidding? I'm dying to go. Perhaps. <laughs> of course, we will miss Arthur and Viv and Carol and little Philip, but... But you know, the wonderful thing is, I really can't think of one good reason for not going. Can you? Not one. Not one. Ooh. You burned yourself. Mm. Lord, you burned your Oh, pinky. honey, it'll be all right. Look, I just happened to think, if that happened up there in the wilderness, where would we get a Band-Aid? I'd run down to the corner drugstore. More, the nearest corner is 47 miles away. That's all right. I love a good jog in the morning. <laughs> jog? Maud, it's cold and windy up there. The north wind! Your hair will look a mess. Where would we find a hairdresser? There's no Mr. Billy. <laughs> Mr. Billy will fly up. Mr. Billy always flies. <laughs> and if worse comes to worse, I'll wash my own hair. You know, through a hole in the ice. <laughs> But, Maud! Oh, besides Walter, I'll have my big, strong, handsome Northwoods He-Man to take care of me. That reminds me, you're a gynecologist. <laughs> Where would we find one? Not in the yellow pages. The yellow pages are only one page thick. <laughs> the Mounties will find us one. The Mounties always get their gynecologist. <laughs> I can't let you do this. I'm just a selfish beast, indulging myself in my own pleasure while forcing you to leave behind the things you hold most dear. Your druggist, Mr. Billy, your gynecologist. <laughs> Taking you away from the things you love the most, Findlay's friendly appliances. <laughs> Maud, we're not going. Oh, come on. Now, Walter, I will not let you throw away your lifelong dream just because I happen to be crazy about that store. No, Maud, I've made up my mind. I love you more than my silly old dream. We're not going, and that's that. Oh, Walter. Walter, you're the most unselfish man who ever lived. <laughs> it's my nature.